Ça va, là, I can't tell you how excited I am. Unfortunately, I'm not with a family as you've seen, but I am with a friend. I'll introduce you to him in a minute, Samuel. The reason I'm not going with my family, with baby Knight and Elise, I'll tell you about that in a minute. But first, I'm gonna tell you about what I'm gonna do. Now, this is gonna be a bit different. I'm gonna be traveling to northeast of India. Now, this is a place I've always wanted to go. Few foreign travelers go there. Can be a bit difficult at times. We're gonna be going up into Sikkim, Darjeeling, Gangtok, down through us across Assam, we're going to go and see some Bengal tigers, some rhinos. We're going to go down into the dense jungle of Magalaya, try and find those root bridges, and we're going to have some fun. And I'm going to eat as much food as possible. I've seen the uh, the blood sausage, the blood rice, the the tali in uh, northeast India. It's supposed to be insane. So I'm going to be trying that with my friend Samuel. I'll introduce you to him now. <laughs> My name's Sam. Malaria is a big thing in Northeast, high risk they say, in Magalia. And this is a place that we couldn't miss if you're going to the Northeast. So we decided not to take the little one. He's only four years old, but I'll take the risk with my friend Samuel. I've known him for 20 years. Let me go and introduce you to him now. This is Samuel. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I haven't had any coffee yet, so bear with me. He's going to be my confidant, my lover, my right hand man, my cameraman. Cameraman primarily. <laughs> As you all know, I love India. And my wife keeps saying to me that I probably love India more than her sometimes, but it's my favourite park in Delhi. We're in Lodi Gardens. Some of these buildings are insane. We've got a flight, so we're flying over to Guwahati in about four hours. So I just wanted to walk around here recharge the batteries in the sun really peaceful beautiful people have some chats to some people in the park I feel so relaxed you come off of the main road from the beeping the honking people screaming at each other to this park it's so quiet and all you hear is birds a couple of monkeys every now and again it's absolutely incredible. It's 40 degrees at the moment in Delhi. It's so hot. Hopefully it's going to be a bit more cooler in the mountains up in Sikkim, Magala and Assam. Wow. I love this place. Please guys, if you can, subscribe to our channel. This adventure is going to be... I don't even know what to expect. Jungles, mountains, rhinos, tigers. We're going to try and see it all. And if you could like the video as well and, and, and share it with some of your friends and family that you think would like to see me and Samuel traveling the northeast. We'll see you on the plane. Made it to the airport, a few hours to spare. We're gonna go and get our first Kingfisher of the trip. I need all the recommendations possible because I have no idea what we're doing when we get to these places in the North East. So if you're from there or you've been there, please let me know in the comment section what I should do, where I should be going, where I should be staying and what I should be eating. Hi everyone, listen, I'm uh, Lawrence and I've been best friends for a very long time. Just by coincidence, I'm joining them on this trip because um, Elise and the little one aren't going to be here. Oh, I've had <laughs> we're late. Oh. There we are. Beautiful. Stupendous, look at that. 
We're absolutely shattered. It's a thunderstorm outside. You hear it? Okay. It's Sammy. What are you eating? Chicken. I don't know where it's from, but it's delicious. Picked up some chicken on the way back. Absolutely exhausted. We're going to get some sleep and then we're going to go down to Shillong and Cherubunji. Hopefully in one shot. I'm going to go all the way through on a bus. This is what I'm going to be needing. My first night in the northeast. We're staying in this beautiful homestay. Have a look at this. Five pounds a night. So that's 500 Indian rupees per night each for this homestay in Guwahati. And I've been bitten about 25 times already. So this is going to be my best friend for the next three weeks. We're now going to travel from Guwahati down to, to Shillong. So come with us on that journey. It's going to be an adventure. I don't even know how we can get there. I think there's a bus, but it said there was only one a day. I don't know what time it is. It's about 11 o'clock in the morning. Have we missed it? I don't know. Probably is my guess. However, we will get there. Let's go and get some food. Let's go and get a coffee. Samwise is up and about. He's with breasts out. Hello, brother. Okay, so this is gonna be a journey in itself. So we've got to get, walk down the road, get a bus. It's about half an hour to Kanapur, 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 Kanapur. And then we get a car from there. He said it's about 800 rupees, 1,000 rupees down to Shillong. We might be able to get one direct. We might be able to get one direct to Cherapunji as well. So we'll see how much that is. It's hot. It actually feels hotter than Delhi. My nose, is really blocked. We've been in the cities now for two days and it's really taken its toll on us. Hopefully we'll be down in the jungle very, very shortly. We've seen loads of these girls hostels here. There's about four or five just up this road alone. Let me know in the comment section why there are so many that are split up. I haven't noticed it anywhere else in India. Maybe there are, but I just haven't seen them. But let's know. Man down, man down. He's had to stop off to get some supplies. His stomach's not feeling too good. We've had some of the best chicken I've ever had on this trip. The tandoori chicken, the Afghani chicken, the uh, Bati chicken in Delhi have been absolutely insane. But I think Sammy boy is, uh, he's struggling at the minute, bless <laughs> it. It's so hot, the bowl, all the ink from the bottle, the label, it's just obviously melted and it's all over me. So now I've got a semi-permanent tattoo for the next couple of days, I think. This is quickly becoming my favorite place I've been to in India. Slice of chicken to make sure it's cooked all the way through. Oh. 
it's just like a melting pot. Everyone's different. Everyone's got different complexion, different facial features. I've been in Bethnal Green. I've lost Sam. I've lost Sam. There he is. Hello, Caesar. First Indian bus. Uh, How do you feel? Uh, hot. Claustrophobic. <laughs> First time on an Indian bus. It's comfortable. Thank you, brother. Dirty, yeah. The left side is for ladies, the right side is for men. Remember that. Only got thrown off the first time I got on the bus. Come on, come That was an experience. Now we need to find a taxi <coughs> to get us to Shillong or to Cherapunji, depending on if there are cars available. Sorry, brother. Shillong, huh? Hello. Taxi. Taxi in Shillong, huh? Uh, how much? Two people. Two people. Two people. Two. Two. Three. 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 Two. No, no, me and him. Oh. Two. Two people. Mm -hmm. 500. 500 per person. One people. One person, 500. That's fine. How much is that? <sighs> the heat. It was 40 degrees in Delhi and it feels like it's 55 degrees here. It's supposed to be a cooler. So he's come around with the car and he said 500 each, which is five pounds for a three and a half hour drive. It doesn't sound right. Hello. Hey, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. Oh, mate, air conditioning. This is lovely, this. Yeah. How did you find the first Indian bus journey? It went bad, was I it? I liked it, man. No, it was good, it was good. Like the, the, uh, the music on there. Turn that down a bit. <laughs> it's nice because it gets you in a little like trance. It's like the yeah. I could, fall, I could have fallen asleep literally. Let's go to Shillong. We've stopped half along the way. I've got a bad headache. Feel sent. You know when your skin is very sensitive to touch. Um, all my bad knees, my bad ankles starting to hurt. So I think I'm getting ill. So I'm just going to grab some paracetamol now and some decongestion stuff for my nose and then we'll be back on the road. We're nearly at Shillong. This is the last stop. I oh, don't know where we are exactly, but it's getting greener and greener as we drive down. I can't wait to eventually end up down in Dorky on the border of Bangladesh. But until that time, we're going to go to the police bazaar. I'm gonna get some food. I wanna try some of the local food, get some local tali, and we'll see you in Shalom. We've arrived. You know what? Coming into this place, I had a similar feeling to the one I got in Chargao in the Philippines where it just felt very comfortable. I'm not gonna to wanna to leave. The people have been so friendly, so helpful. Couldn't do enough for you. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. We're gonna head down to the police bazaar now. So, a night market, the police bazaar food market. And apparently there's a gig on down there as well. I don't know who's performing or whatnot, but some of these houses are stunning. It's such a contrast to being in Delhi, Guwahati. It was just crazy full on. This is a lot more laid back, a lot more chilled. We're gonna, we're gonna like this place. We're gonna like this place a lot. Hello. And the further east you get, the people change as well. They look like they've got a lot more of that East Asian feel. Like from Burma, from, from Thailand. It's just like a melting pot. Everyone's different. Everyone's got different complexion, different facial features. I've been in Bethnal Green. Please, if you have any suggestions, any recommendations, food we should try, things we should see, Please put them down in the comments section as well. We want to get, we want to get, we want to try and see and do as much as we can while we're here. And the thing is as well to note here, they eat a lot of pork. They eat beef, they eat pork. So we see it everywhere now. The vibe here, I can't explain. It's so lovely. You can tell it's like a village you feel, but there's obviously a lot of people living here. 
It's the capital of Meghalaya. So you're gonna have lots and lots of people here, but it's still got that village atmosphere. Everyone's still not too busy to say hello. Everyone's interested in what you're doing. <laughs> Let's get some food. I'm absolutely starving. You want to try some noodles? Okay. I've been so excited to try all this street food. David's been here, has done some of this uh, vlogging about three or four years ago, and I've wanted to come here ever since. We're going to go and get some chicken. I want to try some pork. In this part of India, they actually eat pork. It's probably more common than chicken in a lot of the places. It's a bit spicy, isn't it? <laughs> I see you, mate. Bitten by a mosquito on my hip. I thought it was in my pocket or something, I don't know. <laughs> Hello, brother. Hello, brother. Can I try one portion, please? Yeah, just one portion. Honey, bye bye. Kidna. Red onion, some coriander, looks like some of this hot sauce, I mean... Oh! It's good, it does look good. Oh, that is hot. Right, here we go. Oh! Unreal. Give your lips. Do you love a noodle, Sam? I do like a noodle. Not after full pizza, though. I'll give it a go. What's the verdict? What's the verdict? That's good, man. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's good. tasty, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That hot sauce is nice as well. Yeah. That's nice. Great start. Look at all these stalls down here. We've got loads to eat in and all the loads. Definitely going to be getting a taxi home. I like that. Very traditional. Yeah, it's, it's traditional. What kind of food is it? Yeah. It's rice along with pork or chicken. Uh -huh. And you'll be getting some chutneys, okay. some deep types. Okay, you'll be getting it right over there. Okay, delicious. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. We're going to try that chata. We're also going to try this chi this pork that they have yeah. on there and some chicken. And they've got like, you buy it, you buy it by the leg, pre-cooked. They cut into it, warm it up on the open flame, get all crispy. It's going to be good. <laughs> Look at this, the pork. Number two. You see the pork here with the fat. Again, we've got a little bit of cabbage here. Oh, that's spicy. It's good, man. Look at the pork fat. It's like, look how soft the fat is. Wind's picked up. <laughs> right. Look at that. Pork fat. Okay. Mm. Oh my God. The flavour of that fat. I don't normally like the fatty, you know, parts of the meat. That flavour in there is like soaked. It's like marinated in the, its own juices. Unbelievable. It's, a, it's all fat. Oh, oh my god. I don't know what marinade they use. I'm just eating pork fat. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's so tasty. Sam, you gotta try some of this. His stomach, he's amateur. Amateur hour over here. Give him a week. <laughs> this is genuinely, this is one of the best things I've had in India. All the times I've been to India, this is top three, easy. And it could be, it could even be number one. Round two. Nice and crispy, the skin. You see it's all charred there. Slice of chicken, make sure it's cooked all the way through. Oh. I'm moving to Sri Lanka. <laughs> I'm real. Mm. Oh my God. I'm gonna be here all night. I think this place opens until 
12, 1 o'clock in the morning, I think. All the stalls don't open until 8 o'clock. So make sure you come here after 8, and then all of the stalls will be available. Okay, brother, this chai tea? Chai? India tea. India tea. India tea. India tea. India tea. Sammy, you're gonna love this. Man, that's that's authentic, man. That's really good. I've had I've had this kind of tea before, once or twice before. It's gorgeous. Is it sweet? Super sweet. It's got a like cinnamony kind of taste. I don't know, but it's super hot. Genuinely, I'm still blown away by that pork. The fat. I don't like pork fat like that. It tasted. It was insane. It was so soft and buttery. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to get that again tomorrow. So we're just walking down the road now, the market road. Shops are still open. It's half eight and the energy of this place is booming. No signs of it calming down either. I think this might be open until late late. When we pulled into Shillong, I had this feeling about this place. The energy, the vibe. I knew I was going to like it, but this is quickly becoming my favourite place I've been to in India. Waking up in paradise, day two in Shillong. We're going to find a fruit stall. I want to try the local fruits of Magalia. Fruits are different, the watermelon's darker, the mangoes are a bit different. Down at the market yesterday, down at the night market, there would seem like there were hundreds of different ones to try. Also, if you haven't seen our video from yesterday, we were at the night market trying the pork and the chicken. The noodles, it was insane. Go and watch that video um, and you enjoy our content. I'm gonna be in the northeast of India now for one month, documenting my journey. Goodbye. We're in the taxi get going down to uh, Bada Bazaar, but locally it's called Yodu. Yodu, Yodu. That's where we're gonna go. The oldest market in Shillong, huh? Okay, Shalom. We're gonna get run over. It's chaos here. Beautiful chaos. I miss this in India. We're at the entrance to Bada Bazaar. Can I try some fruit? Mixture. Mixture? Yes, please. I wanna try. Uh, you, want, do you wanna try a banana? Banana and orange for me. Two, two banana. Okay, where is this one from? Yeah. Along along the river, Magalia. Yeah. Try these local oranges. Apparently, they're supposed to be unbelievable. Look at these cheeky little. There we go. Good what other? What's this? Papaya. Papaya. Yeah. And mango. What's this one? Mango. Oh. Are they can they eat now or not? No, no. You can try right now, right? but you have to peel them. Yes, can yeah. you peel for me? Okay. Thank you, thank you. With a uh, mango? Which one? Which one? This one? Now, no? Yeah, eat now. Huh? Yeah, one this one? one? This one? Yeah. This one, pomegranate, huh? Yeah. Okay, we'll try one of them. Here we go. Absolutely buzzing. I don't know, everywhere we've travelled, I've never been to a veg shop and tried their local fruit. Haoi. Haoi, yes. M, no. Haoi. Haoi, please, yes. Where, where are you from? Are you from, from Shillong? Uttar Pradesh, UP. Ah, okay. Gumni aya hai baba. That's far, no? That's far. Aap kaise hai, bhai sahab? Acha hai. Aap kahan se? Uttar Pradesh, UP. Ah, okay. Idhar me thora dekhne aya ghurne. Aap ka naam kya hai? Mera naam Bhagwan Nath. Bhagwan Nath. Yeh, chadu baba, dhanchari. Ah, okay, I see. Hello. Yeah, I see. Oh, yeah, I see. Your beard is much nicer than his beard. <laughs> Better beard. <laughs> and where are you from? From, uh, from England. England. Oh, London is so nice. 
not as nice as here, I promise. <laughs> this is nicer. Sure. Yeah. Yes? Okay. No problem. <laughs> she wants to take photo with you. Photo? Yeah. Okay, yeah, no problem. One photo with you. Yeah? <laughs> mm, the freshest. Mmm. Mmm. Very tasty. Oh man. Good? The past past the test. Past the test. Mango. Beautiful fresh thank mango. She okay, just peeled it. Where did you learn your English? Oh my god. Where did you learn to speak English? You speak very well. That is beautiful. Yep. Mm. Incredible. Oh man. This is delicious, man. Good lord. How crazy is that? Local, just down the river. <laughs> Very famous. Yeah. And where are the bananas from? Nong Po. Nong Po. Yeah, you know. And, the... and from there, Nong Po. Yeah. No, Nong Po, no, it's like uh, in. If you go to Guatina, yeah, you have to go through. Okay, okay, acha. <laughs> the flies just add to the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. And, the <laughs> and the flavor. And the fly also. And the flavor. <laughs> oh yeah. Good. Tastes like an orange. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> These bananas are crazy. In, the... In India. They have so many different bananas, they all taste completely different. I had one yesterday, it wasn't one so is. sweet. Yeah. It wasn't so yeah, yeah, yeah. sweet. It was nice, but not so sweet. Yeah. Some of them are like, more like plantain, more like mm -hmm. uh, starchy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this one's sweet. Yeah. This is about perfect for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Comment below what banana this is. No, What's your name? Yeah. What's your name? Marvelous. 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 Oh, well, that's very apt. <laughs> Thank you. You are. You Have are. a great day. Thank you. Bye, bye. Take care. These, the lady suggested, we can only get in this area apparently. I'm going to find out what they're called. But apparently, very, very sour, and you have to eat them with something. Maybe salt. I don't know. What would you have to eat them with? She said salt. 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 They eat like raw mango with salt in Colombia for that reason, I think. Ah, we'll try. Hello. Can I, can I try? We try both, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just small. You put this inside. Ah, okay. Thank you. I don't know what that is. Oh. Oh my god! That's the sourest. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, you know those sweets when you're a kid? The sour. Well, like the two ones there. And you go. This is insane. So this must be. It's almost like a salt and a spice. Oh, well, they're really boorish. We've got a bit of chilli in there. Tell yourself some salt. That is the sourest thing. That is the sour sourest fruit I've ever had in my life. Excuse me. What is this called? Sarpe. 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 That was an experience and half, that one. I just try one. Thank you so much. This is the longest blackberry I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Have a bash on that. Mmm, tasty, but not as not as flavoursome as the ones in the UK. Yeah. A bit more of a dull flavour, but nice. <laughs>
this one from Magali. Yeah. 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 Oh my god. You good? Yeah, very good. Oh, what's in there? Local Magalia tomato. So nice. A bit sweet. Very tasty. Mm. Thank you very much. Another tomato. Little baba. Jesus Christ. In the beard. Look at that juice. Oh my god, yeah. The equivalent of a cherry tomato. Mm. All around my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Those tomatoes are unbelievable. Now we're going to go into the market and uh, have a look around. How long have you had this shop? Uh, it's been 12 years or... 12 years? Yeah. Do restaurants come and buy it from you? Yeah, or yeah. Ah, okay. They can buy from you. Uh -huh. These are all these special spices. And what are they called? So what's this orange one here? That one is polished dal. Polished dal. Yeah. And this one? This one is mu dal. Ah. This market is unbelievable. The, the smells, the taste, the colours. And they're all down these tiny little narrow walkways. I mean, you could tell it's the oldest market in Shillong. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old. <laughs> and you can literally get anything you want here. There's from toys to dal mix to water to fruit and veg. They've got little stalls as well where they're selling the, um, the cussy food that we're going to try in a bit. So. Can I eat now? I eat now? Eat. I eat now? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Can I have one? I don't know. Shoot, you oh, they're not raw and they're having me on. <laughs> oh. Okay. Look at this here. Hmm. This I eat? I eat, huh? Fucking <laughs> 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 hell. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> I'm off me now. I don't know what's it. <laughs> don't you drop this and I won't get out of it. Hard, huh? Mm. You just chew? Oh, okay. And this one after I have. Okay, thank you. Let's, yeah, get, out. Let's get out of here, sharpish. <laughs> thank you. God bless, bless, you. bless. God bless you, bone. My first Cassie meal. We've got some chicken, some rice. Some vegetables. Now I don't know what this one is. If you can tell me what that vegetable is in the comment section, let's try this. Then. Looks like cabbage. You see? Mm. Oh, yeah, it tastes like cabbage, but wait. Oh yeah, the after. Oh. The after tastes very strong. Very strong. We try this rice. Oh, that rice is lovely. Yeah. The chicken. The chicken's good. It's good. Very good. Let me try this bit of chicken. Mmm. Mmm. That chicken is unreal. Mmm. Really tasty. Just rice. And this is also mm. chicken. Chicken. Cut into small, small pieces. Chicken. Mmm. We just bought over another dish. Mm. Chicken. More chicken. More chicken. That chicken is lovely. Yeah, yeah it's good. It's good. I don't know what these are. The lentil. It's like lentil. This chutney. Made of fish scales, apparently. You had some yet? I've got a kick to it. Jesus Christ. 
That's got a kick. These lentils are lovely. Really, really tasty. Mm. Here we got some fish. Look, <laughs> where are we going? There? There's a fight happening outside, so. Mmm. Who's going We're again? Mmm. Got to be careful of the bones. Just that chicken. Just in one bite, look how many bones. It's in one bite. Be very careful. Mmm. Very toasty. I love the overall taste here. It's like. It's full of flavour, mate. Oh, bro. But yeah, full of flavour, but not overwhelming. It's not like rich in flavour where you can't even taste the meat. Yeah, but it's nothing overpowers one, one no, piece. No, there's enough flavour to keep you happy while you're eating. Just the way I like it. Fish, yes. Right, let's try this chicken. Small pieces of chicken. I don't know what this is, but it looks like liver or something. Mm. It's like chicken livers. Then we've got some beef intestine. First time eating beef intestine. Let's see how it goes. Oh. Well, I didn't think I would like, but actually, it's really tasty. It's like obviously soft, soft little tubes carved up, and a lovely sauce. Yep, first meal, I'm happy. I'll be eating more of this. For any vegetarians, you might want to look away. We're going to see the wet market or some of the meats being chopped up. Yesterday, we had a bit of a problem. I'm actually... Good play.
We're just about to climb a tree. So. Okay, sir, it's a pleasure to meet you. My phone network actually thinks we're in Bangladesh. As you can hear, the Muslim prayer, Bangladesh. Pretty sure that we've just got lost in the cleanest village in Asia. Yesterday, we had a bit of a problem. We were supposed to be going down to Dalki. There was heavy rain in the morning. Uh, unfortunately, there was a landslide. I'm not sure if anyone got hurt. I hope not. And they closed the road. So, we shifted our days back. We are still going down to Dalki. We've just stopped on the way to get some chai tea. The further we get out, the more beautiful it gets. Obviously, the more rural, you've got more of the rolling fields. This place is incredible. I'm actually, I'm not even going to say anything. This view says it all. Absolutely blown away. This is supposed to be Asia's cleanest village. A few shops up at the top. There was a hundred rupees to get in. Let's go and see what makes this the cleanest village in Asia. I mean, Asia's a big place. Now, I've asked you one bit of rubbish, I'm getting my money back. And we're just literally 40 meters down the road from the entrance. And you can see that this is a very clean place. So many different greens. <laughs> I've literally seen a thousand plants since we've, we've, we've reached the top of the road. So tropical, completely different feel from Shillong. I mean, we're right in the thick of it here. Very jungly. Hello. Absolutely beautiful, lovely, calm vibes. Drop me water, better pick that up. The energy here is very calming, very chilled, very relaxed. You hear the water flowing, there's a few rivers running through it. It's pretty beautiful, to be honest. When people explained Meghalaya to me, this is exactly what I expected. Clean, pure jungle. And it's hot. I'm just about to climb a tree. So it's a bamboo helter skelter, yeah. <laughs> it does say eight persons allowed on there at one time. I'm eight a bit cassie uh, persons. Yeah, eight cassie, so that means one and a half of me. <laughs> so I'll make sure it's all clear before I start climbing. But it looks high, it looks wobbly. But I'll bet we can get some nice shots up there, so we're gonna go up there now. First level, not too bad. We're about four meters up. Swaying a bit too much for my liking. Oh, second bit. You coming down? Oh. <laughs> what in the... Don't even look that steep. Not too sure about this. I'm scared of heights by the way, just in case anyone's wondering. Oh, ocha. Here we go, look at this. How beautiful is this? Really? 
つ咲いてる。Elise would be proud of me for that. Scared of heights, eight meters up in the air. Up there. Kubling. Kubling. Come not be long. Klein. <laughs> Klein. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Where do you come from? From London, England. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you very much, brother. From across the sea you came. From across the sea, all the way to this place. Okay, sir. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> the pleasure's all mine. And unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being so friendly and welcoming us. Okay. Double, double, si bon. Double. Have a nice day. <laughs> Goodbye. Double. It's really cool, they've got these little bins that are located all over the village for people to put their trash in. It's not just because it's clean, it's the foliage, it's like, I don't even know how many different types of plants and trees and God knows what there are. All the different kinds of shades of yellows and greens and reds. Cool play. <laughs> Pretty sure that we've just got lost in the cleanest village in Asia. I don't know where I am. And Google is not being our friend. I'm so glad I come to this place. We've been in the car for about two and a half hours from Shillong down to Dalki. And uh, it was nice to get out of the car, stretch our legs, and especially in this place. So I've gone for a little walk to stretch the legs, but I should turn back really. Probably end up in Bangladesh. Absolutely stunning. Probably the most peaceful place I've ever been in. All you hear is the, the wildlife and the gentle flow of the water and the stream going through the village. Cockerel every now and again. Absolutely stunning. Definitely recommend this place. If you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, this will be a, uh, over a month in, uh, in uh, the northeast and the journey's just begun. So we're going to be going down to Meghalaya, across to Assam, up to Sikkim down to Varanasi and then finishing off in Delhi so it's going to be an amazing adventure please come along subscribe please like and share with your friends as well that would really help us out thank you very much so as you can hear the Muslim prayer we're literally this is the border so beyond this mesh here Bangladesh that is Bangladesh there I could throw a stone Bangladesh. The place where we're going now, Dalki, is right on the border. The river acts as the border of Bangladesh and India. Obviously predominantly Muslim in Bangladesh. Okay, onward. My phone network actually thinks we're in Bangladesh. We're going down by the starboard. Let me get it out. <laughs> it doesn't feel as safe as I thought it was gonna. This place just blows my mind. We're in Dalkey. We're going down these steps. We're gonna get on a boat over to this madness. Look at that. Tens of thousands of people at Dalkey. So we're gonna me and Sam are gonna jump on a boat. Hello brother. Yeah. Was it good fun? Yeah. Good fun. Okay, yacha. Acha. Acha. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste, Namaste, my son. 
<laughs> oh, hello. I'll do that. Look at all those people, look. Insane. And then we're going to go up to Shnong Pen after that. If you haven't seen the video before this, we were at the cleanest village in Asia. Go and have a look at that. I'll put the link to the uh, video in the description in the comment section. Oh, Kidna, how, mu how much for the... for the uh, 800? One thousand. 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 One Max Millen. Max Millen. <laughs> nice to meet you, Max Millen. <laughs> Look at all those people. This is insane. Look how many people there are. Sounds like there's a war going on. I can't wait to get over there. Why are there so many people there? This is all Bangladesh. Oh, this is Bangladesh. Wow, so all of these people here are from Bangladesh, I didn't know. They're Bangladeshi. How are you feeling, sir? It's exactly what I wanted, man. I'm in the belly of the beast for sure. Oh, look, he's going to jump. Go on, son. gonna do it. Whoa! <laughs> 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 Tell me in the comment section what the occasion is, why there are probably about 100,000 people in Dalki. Because I don't understand what the occasion is, but everyone's going crazy, everyone's splashing, everyone's cheering. It looks like one big festival. Maybe this is a daily thing, but let me know in the comment section what's going on, because I have no idea. <laughs> many, many fish, big fish. Oh. Hello, Pokemon. They look like they're having a good old time. Wow, this is beautiful. Insane. We're going down by the starboard. <laughs> Get it out. Get your life jackets out. <laughs> See that one that's going to slip in? Ah. Yeah. yeah. Hard work. Hard work. <laughs> He's having a nap. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, it's falling off. How cool was that? So we've literally just got to Dalki. That was the first. It was, this was literally the first thing we've done in this area. We've still got to go to Shnong Lim Pen, where we're going to be staying in a tent. We're going to be camping on the river for a barbecue. Probably get a kayak or something. Can't wait for the next couple of days. If you can, guys, please subscribe, like the video. It would help us out a huge amount, and it doesn't cost you anything. So I'd really appreciate it. Brother, what are these bottles in there with the rope? Yeah. Like the rope? Uh, the rope is uh, to fishing nets. For fishing nets underneath? In the boat. And uh, we'll um, run here and uh, that's why the boat is not. Aha. Uh -huh. And what do they catch? Just fish? So many fish. So many fish, yeah. There's a village in the mountains up there.
as we're getting closer to the top of the river here, you can see there's little little whirlpools forming under the uh, under the surface. Obviously, the current is probably quite strong, or it's getting strong anyway. And then I just looked up and saw this. This place is incredible. Whoa. So this is the island bit where you get off and they've just got a few little concessions here. Selling Maggie noodles you know, your regular snacks, your crisps, your, your Cokes and whatnot. Let's go get some grub. I asked for a cold bottle and she, put, she kept pointing at the river. I was thinking, she pulled it out. I don't want to go home, I want to, I want to drink. And she'd go, no, 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 no. Anyway, have a look. Natural fridge, beautiful. If you haven't seen my videos before, this is Sam and he's always getting his clothes off. For some reason he just likes sitting on rocks half naked, so. So I have just found out, and now it makes perfect sense. There's like 100,000 people over on the riverbank because they're celebrating the, uh, if it's Eid or the end of, of their Ramadan. So they all come down to celebrate and to eat on the riverbank. That's what all those people are doing there. I thought that can't be, they can't, 100,000 people can't come there daily, but that's the reason why. This place is unbelievable. One thing to notice as well, in December, he said it's crystal clear because there's more water, it's faster and it cleans quicker. So you'll literally be able to see the bottom the whole way across the river around December time. So we're still on the Bangladesh India border and we come across this. Absolutely stunning. Waterfall down into the rocks. Apparently there's huge fish down there. But this is flowing to the waterfalls in India, but it flows straight into Bangladesh. This is the main man, I man. Yeah. He's been helping us out, looking after us all day. We've just got to Snong Pen now. Oh my God, it looks absolutely beautiful. We've got the walk bridge over there. You've got all the tents down on the rocks down here. We're gonna have some food now. Go and get the tent, which I'll show you guys. I've never camped in a tent before, abroad. So this will be a first for me. So I've got a tent, Sam's got a tent. Our driver, Eban's got a tent. So he's gonna be taking us back to Shillong in the morning. Let's get in and have a look at this tent. It's so hot. And I've seen my first mosquito. I feel like the mosquitoes are like ninjas in India. I've been bitten by mosquitoes, but I'm, I haven't seen one since I've been here. But I've just seen my first one and he looked angry. So uh, I need to get some jungle spray on. Right, let's get stuck into this. Bit of rice. How is it, mate? Good. First one, what's this one? Hello. Potatoes, carrots, long beans, tofu. Looks like a tomato. Yeah. Some rice. Oh, okay. Hot. Mm. Hot. Mm. Hot. Mm. It's like chili, tomato, lime. It's like a hint of lime juice in it. Now we've got some chicken. Very sharp. Hey, hey, you want to in Oh, that chicken. Yeah, Gorgeous. Mm, that chicken. Very, very good. And we've got some dal here. Let me tip that on. Mm. Oh, good. Wow. A bit of bread, some dal, got some salad. 
Happy days. I'm going to dig into this and then I'll show you around the tent. It doesn't feel as safe as I thought it was gonna. Jesus Christ. I mean, it does give it by a bit of tinfoil, but. I'll be honest with you, this bridge looked sturdier than it actually is. It's made by aluminium, it's swaying, and I'm scared of heights. Not a good combination. However, this looks so cool down there. So we've just arrived, Shongnam, Shongnam Pen. Shongnam Pen, Shongnam Pen. I'll put the name down here. Frank's Adventures. I'll show you the tent in a minute. But at the moment, I'm walking across this bridge, trying not to look down because I'm petrified. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I've also got these little shops up along on top of the bank. They sell hot food, they sell snacks, fizzy drinks, water, even got like uh, your basic toiletries here. Have a look here, they'll look after you. Each of the tent campsites do have their own little restroom block that you can see behind me. Um, men's and women's. It's literally the traditional toilet with a tap. So bring your wet wipes. This place is unbelievable. So they've just got tents scattered about, big rocks with tents on. The people must just come down, stay in, and go on the river. They've got loads of kayaks, boats. There's a zip line that goes across, across the river next to that wonky bridge we were just on. Oh, I'm loving this. That is awesome. Okay, let's go and check out the tent. How you doing, brother? Good, amazing. Let's have a look around. And there we have it, folks. That is it. Just a mattress, thin foam, a couple of pillows, and a blanket. And it's going to be so sweet because I'm absolutely exhausted. <laughs> Good morning. It's one of those days that I just don't want to video because it's so beautiful and you have such a moment to yourself. It's so loud but quiet. We've got the Rip Rapids running through the village. We've got all these beautiful stones. It's like a quarry. And then just walk the walls aligned with just the most greens you've ever seen in your life. <coughs> it's 
long pen, Magalia. I've just been in a kind of wash, first time in a while. It's almost like sitting in an ice bath. It's really cold, feels really fresh. I'm really satisfied. This place just blows my mind. Last night we got here, just one of those perfect moments yesterday. This place, Shnong Pen, is not the easiest to get to, even if you're in Shillong. Even if you're in Dalky, it's still probably half an hour, an hour from Dalky, but it is 100% worth it. We were having second thoughts. We've been in the car for about seven or eight hours and we were in Dalky at the boat race and uh, so do you know what I don't even know what to do whether to because the problem with these places they're so remote you need a driver with you so me not really knowing the situation sorry I've got my wet pants in my hand um, I just thought right okay we'll get a driver to drop us down here we'll do whatever we're going to do and then we'll get a driver to pick us back up in the morning take us back up to Shillong but it doesn't quite work like that we are in the middle of nowhere it's not like you can just call an uber or even just call someone to come and get you they've, still, they've got to travel an hour to come and get you and then take you four hours to Shillong a recommendation would be get a driver a driver come and stay in the same hotel or another hotel or a tent like we did and then he can take you back up to Shillong or to wherever you need to go in the morning our next video would be our journey from Shlong Peng Dalki up to Guwahati which is about eight and a half hours. From Guwahati we're going to sleep for hopefully a few hours and then at 5am we get a train over to Sikkim to Siliguri and then we're going to be going to do Darjeeling and Gangtok so. Driver needed a rest so Papa's taking over. Gobble, gobble. I think this car's a bit small for me but <laughs> But so. get us there safe, don't you worry, stand on me. Wow, look at that down there. Look at the drop. It's about 500 meter drop, straight off the edge. And we haven't got any brakes. <laughs> More seat belts. <laughs> More seat belts. More tyres with tread on them. <laughs> wow. Is that a goat? A cow. <laughs> Hello mate. Look at that. Whoa, look. I love the mist right across the top. <laughs> We're all safe, driver's okay now. We've got like a four hour drive. So I said, I'll jump in he was feeling a bit rough. Um, I'm alive. But have a look at this view. We've just pulled over to like a viewpoint and it's got like a blue mist through the valley of these mountains. It's insane. The air feels so clean. Beautiful. Double We're gonna go back to PB now, Police Bazaar at uh, Shillong. I keep saying Shillong, it's Shillong. We're gonna get some food. I wanna try before I go, blood sausage. I've heard blood sausage and blood rice. Don't know if it's a good idea before a 10 hour train journey, but we'll give it a go. Let's see what happens. Onward. <laughs> Taken us 10 hours to get up to Gowahati. We've now got another 10 hour train over to Siniguri tomorrow. The cab driver's apparently picking us up at four o'clock, but I've got a horrible feeling he's not gonna come. We've just yeah. come into this room and it's, it is what it is. I'm, I'm not even, don't even care anymore. <laughs> so, I'll see you in about two and a half hours for the next leg on the train up to Siniguri. We're on our way to Darjeeling and Gangtok. Please subscribe, 
please, for the love of God, subscribe to our channel. <laughs> I'm at my wit's end. I need to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Okay. Onward. Oh my God. <sighs> I'm like an hour and a bit sleep. And I went for a taxi to pick us up at four to take us to the train station to get a five o'clock train. And just like that, ready to go. Suitcase packed, everything packed. Driver's downstairs, he did turn up quarter to four. Hats off to him. I didn't have any, I'll be honest with you, didn't have any faith in him showing up. But he is here, he's downstairs. Let's go to the station. This has actually been the biggest journey I've ever had traveling. It's tough. Come on, Sky Vice up. <coughs> we made it to the station. Kamakia, Kamakia, Kamakia Junction. So, this is the first train I'll be getting ever in India. The mosquitoes here are crazy. And I have to say, Gohati is so smoggy. We've just come from Magalia and it's the cleanest air I feel like I've ever experienced. And we've come up and driving through, my nose is instantly blocked up. We were driving through thick smog clouds, but we're here. So we're on the Capital Express. We're going at 5 a.m. platform, we're on D2. Right, we need to find a shop because I don't know how many chances we're going to get as we're moving towards Siliguri to actually get water, snacks. I'm starving. So, I think this is, hello. This is the train, I think. Although, it doesn't actually look like our train. I think we're here. Let's just check. Is the right one? It should be. Let's check out this. Oh my god, put me down. Let's see too. Hello. Put me down. Let me back up by you then. Let's see too. 49. Hopefully these two. Okay. Oh my god. 52. 49. I'll give you a tour in a minute. I need to catch my breath. We just ran from... <coughs> definitely got the wrong platform, as usual. We just ran all the way over. Got lost. Was at the furthest... Furthest platform. They were calling everybody go and sit down. Everyone go and sit down. But we're here now. I can jump on if it starts leaving. I'm trying to get some more water, so... Number, I think, mate. Bit <laughs> number, bit number to go. <laughs> I think it's a bed sheet, isn't it? No, it's clean. Can I put it? Clean the nose over there. <laughs> <sighs> this actually feels really good. I was just saying to Sam. If the trains were like this clear, it 
all the time. I travel the whole of India on a train. Really comfy. Aircon's really good. There are some mosquitoes that have been winding us up, but overall we've been in a, I mean, we've been in a car where our knees were basically like this for eight hours. From Dalki all the way up to Guwahati. And this is heaven. So I'm gonna enjoy this moment on this train <sighs> while it's empty. Now, they've got three beds here and I don't know if all of them have been booked up, the whole six, and they're gonna pull them out. But if they do, it's gonna be pretty intense because it's gonna be like here. The bed's gonna be like here. So I'm just gonna, oh, so I'm just gonna have to sleep. I was hoping to be able to get some editing done and whatnot. But if that is the case, then there'll be no editing. We only had an hour of sleep last night, so it'd be good to get some shut eye as well. Get some sleep in. Okay. Is that a curtains? This is how you make a bed on an Indian train. Fucking hell. Is it a cow? <laughs> there he is. Oh, you expert, mate. Nice one. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty really spectacular, man. Oh, well, Just had a little nap. Let's see where we are. Colour goats. Yeah, the guy came on and said, Do we want to order some food? 130 rupees each and he's brought us a lovely little rice concoction so I'm gonna get this down me and try and get some more sleep. We've just done a bit of editing and we're still the only ones in the space. Long may that last. Potato and dal and some rice. I'm gonna get stuck in. <sighs> Silly guri, here we come. Six more hours. We just stopped at, I don't know if this is the station, but uh, all the cows alongside the track, there was one cow. This cow was actually on the track. A lady had to come Hello, through and uh, push her off the, uh, off the track. I don't know what we stopped here for. We've been here for about half an hour now. Let me show you the toilet. Mirror. Wash basin. Toilet western style with the hose. Got toilet roll, soap. Can't complain at all. These these guys go up and down the carriage ever since we've got on. Offering chai or jata or peanuts or all the snacks that you could you could think of. There's probably about 15, 15 men up here walking up and down the train. So there are little nibbles on here if you didn't bring any food, but my recommendation is bring water, definitely, and bring some of your own snacks. We did order the food, which I showed you earlier, and it was actually really tasty. I finished a lot. You know what? The trip from Dalki to Siliguri has really taken a turn. We had one hour sleep, as I said, and a couple of hours just then, and I feel 10 times better. Very, very comfortable. We're lucky because we're the only ones in the in the bay at the minute. So it's all very comfortable, lots of space. I'm a happy man. Good brawl. It's Siliguri, we've arrived in Saint. And you know what? The one part of it that I was actually not dreading, but knew would be, would be uncomfortable was the train journey and it turned out to be the best part of the journey. So comfortable, we had a right result because 
we had an empty cabin, so it was just me and him. Uh, no, yeah, brother, one sec, one sec. Um, which was incredible. So, you get these these people here, they come and ask if you need cars, the gang talk, and go chilling. And they give brother a very good price. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is head to a restaurant. We now need to get one of these chaps to take us up to Darjeeling and then we can rest until the morning when we start a huge trek. But that's another story. Okay, okay. Thank you, brother. Thank you, my son. Back at the... It's Mark. Okay. So as you come out of the station, you're hounded by the agents. Get a private car, private car, private car. 2,500 rupees to Darjeeling from Siliguri in a private car. However, these jeeps here, if you get seven people, 250 each, they'll take you in the jeep. So luckily, there are six of us now. We need one more person from the station. We'll make up the seven and then we're up to the... Uh, up to the mountains. I am flagging now. I'm so tired. 19 hours traveling. I think it's been over 20 hours traveling. It's going to be 24 hours by the time we get up to uh, up to Darjeeling. It's going to be worth it. I'm in a weird space at the minute. This place is insane. We're in the hills of Darjeeling. On the way up, we've got probably another hour to go. I'm so exhausted, I feel like I am completely and utterly delirious. But it's put me in a weird space where I'm completely present, just staring out the window like that. Incredible. Well worth the journey. Probably don't do it in a... Uh, in one whole 24 hours with one hour's sleep, but this is all worth it. We've got four or five days up here before we go down to Varanasi, so please do subscribe to our channel. It'd mean the world to us. my mind again. You can imagine the culture difference, the contrast in culture from Delhi to Meghalaya, now up to Sikkim in the mountains. If you haven't watched our, our, our journey from Dalkey, the border of Bangladesh, all the way up to Darjeeling, it's difficult to put into words the, the vibe here is very laid back, very relaxed. It's completely different to Magalaya feel, although that was laid back. This is more of, we've got stuff to do, but we're gonna do it in our time. And when they do work hard, hardest working people, I've seen people carrying four or five suitcases on their head up hills like this. Some of these shops were, were, were founded in the 1890s. And then you have some old buildings that could almost be English buildings. Could almost, you'd find them in central London. You've got like the old Big Ben replica. So the first impressions of Darjeeling was last night when we actually arrived. Very dark, but kind of typical, kind of what I had in mind from watching a few vlogs, reading up about it. I thought, yeah, but we were down in the old Darjeeling, the old town. So we couldn't quite make heads or tails of it. And we've just woken up this morning and then bang, it's just hit you. You've got the mountains in the distance. Heart, the depth perception is very, very difficult because you've got tiny little villages and then these huge mountains. Here, we're gonna do some really cool things. We're gonna be going on trekking tours. Um, an overnight stay, we're going to reach three and a half thousand meters. That'll be in our next video. So make sure you subscribe and watch these videos because I'm quite going to try and do about six or seven videos here. There's so much to see, so much to learn, so much to take in. For some reason, I had it in my head. You know, it, India does this to me every single time. I feel like, right, I've got a grasp of this. I've read enough about it. I've seen enough videos to know what to expect and then you turn up and it's completely different and it blows your socks off. The same with this place, Darjeeling's bigger than I thought. So you've got one level which is old Darjeeling which I'll take you down and see, you've got the old beef markets, 
some of the old restaurants down there, the old tea huts. I'll show you them. And then you've got a modern side, which is, I mean, it's got the Ramada Hotel, Shangri-La, KFC. It's completely different. Um, and they're on two separate levels, so I'll go and show you both. We're just going to meet Gatam now. He's going to take us to go and do a few things today. Hopefully we're going to go and see the museum, which is going to explain about the history of the people here, the tea, the, the, the mountaineering, where it all began, and eat, and drink, and have a great time. Hello, brother. Up here, about 80% of the tourists, uh, Gatti was saying, was uh, are from Calcutta because it's their holidays there. See this smile? We're about to go and eat Nepali Thali, which I've never had before, never tried. I don't know how different it's going to be to uh, the uh, Meghalaya Thali or um, the Kerala Thali that I have tried, but I'm excited. Let's get in there. We're going to fill our bellies. Then we're going to have a day of exploring the beautiful Darjeeling. I just love the raw and rugged feel here. We're going down now into the lower Darjeeling part. Hey, but look at all these cables here. It reminds me of Thailand. So this here is the traditional style cooking. This is how they used to cook back in the day. Unbelievable. The best pour -up. Dal means black dal. Black dal. I'm gonna eat with my hand, so I'm yeah. gonna wash my hands. Yeah. Yeah. But if this this food, you gotta get it. Yeah. Here we have uh, sukua, which is a Nepalese uh, barbecue, and they use a special plate and special stones to cook the meat. It doesn't have to be chicken; it can be any meat. I'm so excited! Here we go. We've had a splash of lime. Here's the piece here. Oh, mmm. Oh, wow. It's like almost like the Nepalese version of tandoori. Yeah, Nepalese tandoori. Amazing. Oh, this is a new favorite for me. These mamos are their Nepalese style mamos. And you take one scoop with a little bit of the mustard below, like that, and you just scoop it straight down. No. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Look at this smile. You can't. Food. That's the. <laughs> this is the food smile. Mmm. Oh. Unbelievable. So you mix this up. So tasty. Go on, Sammy. She's getting stuck in there. Look at you. Put your little mitts in there, son. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever cleaned them. <laughs> Try, try this, try this. What flavor is this guy? Which one? Let me try it. Real strong. It's real good tasty guy. This is uh, mustard with uh, oh, yeah. sesame seed. And, yeah, yeah. and sesame seed. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's already tasty though. <laughs> Your hands too, bro. I've got a bit of dalai chili here. I've got to be careful not to not to have too much of that. I will try a little bit. We've got Szechuan pepper here. Is it Szechuan pepper or Szechuan chili? Chili pepper, yeah. It's called timbur. Timbur. And it's used in a lot of the dishes here in the Nepali cuisine. Local style chicken curry. Let's, let's get involved with this one. Local style chicken curry here. Oh, mm. I just love food. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. This dal is fantastic. I'm going to put the camera down now and get stuck in. Absolutely incredible experience. Nepali, first time I've tried Nepali food. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, we're going to be going on our climb, our trek, up to three and a half thousand meters. So this is the mecca of mountain climbing in this area, this region, the Himalayas, through Nepal.
We're now walking up Birch Hill. I didn't know that they imported lots of Japanese trees. So all of the, the I guess the native trees here are birch. But these long, I mean they look like Japanese trees here. Yeah. Were actually imported and planted by the British. Fascinating place this. I feel like I sat in all of these videos, but this place is something else. I love traveling. At least would love it up here. Maybe we'll trek through to Nepal from Darjeeling with our friends Catherine and Gatti, but uh, I'll put their details down in the description down below as well. If you're coming to Darjeeling, these guys know everyone. They've been here for 20 years and uh, they'll really look after you. This rain is exactly what we needed. So, there is a chance we could, so there's a chance we could go tomorrow, maybe the next day. Um, but Gatti said that we need rain. And look, it's pouring. We want it to keep raining, keep raining, keep raining. The, the more rain, the clearer it will be when we're up there. So, <clears throat> the more we'll get to see, basically. So these are the oldest active trains in the world. I mean, when I say active, there are some trains, some older trains that do work, but these are in constant use. Look, this one's still actually going. The smell is so strong, the smell here, because this one's obviously on. It gets in your mouth, down your throat. This is the biggest request from people back in London in the UK. Please show us some footage of the toy trains in Darjeeling. So this is the most famous, I guess, tourist attraction from the UK for Darjeeling. Obviously, it was used to transport the tea up the mountain, and now people can ride them. Now they've got diesel trains here as well to help because too many people want to use the train and it doesn't have enough power to pull that many people up. So you do have the diesel trains here as well. I'm not going to get on it this time. I'm going to go through the railway station. I'm going to get Gaffy to explain a bit more about it. But they are very, very impressive. Like the train lines here that go through Darjeeling, they obviously go past houses. The people there mostly decorate their houses outside with tiles so they can just jet wash it because obviously all of the smoke and the steam every week just turns black. This one right here is Gatti and Catherine's son Carl's favorite train. This one's for you, Carl. I hope you're watching my videos. It's absolutely incredible. All the nuts and bolts, you can tell, for years have been like welded welded shut so these trains are actually protected uh, by UNESCO protected world heritage which is incredible which is obviously an amazing thing the impact that this tiny town has had on the whole area of this northeast and the significance it's had in the world some of the uh, some of the mountaineers that have summited the highest peaks in the world it's just incredible we're going to go into the station now and have a look hopefully we might be able to get the timetable if we can catch a train coming in and out that'd be amazing so obviously the old track's been completely ripped out and the new metal modern tracks have been laid but they've kept the old wooden sleepers for authenticity so these used to be used the old big metal trains to transport the tea obviously but then you did have one or two coaches that the officers used to use and you could go all the way down to Siliguri from here and it takes about seven hours. Some of the old DHR groups actually come over here um, and hire these out. So they, they would rent it out for the day, go up and down, take film, take photos. A real enthusiast. This guy here, incredibly famous. What they used to do back in the day was he was the chap that would visit different towns, different villages and spread the news. So news about the king, news about the royal family, big news. He would travel from one village, they would tell him, he would come here and he would sing the news and tell everyone in the next village what's happened in the previous village. Crazy. Love it, love it. We're just about to go in the Himalayan coffee shop. Now this place, since we've been here, the best coffee. 
but it is hidden away. If you're at the, the square, the main part, that's sort of where the uh, water fountain is, you'll see Pine Ridge Hotel, which is there. And then you need to go up there. I promise you, you won't regret it. Super modern, lovely cakes, lovely staff, beautiful coffee. Himalayan coffee was absolutely beautiful. Gotta go there. Now, we're off to, Gatti's gonna show us the tea gardens, his favorite tea gardens here in Darjeeling. I'm not sure if we're gonna get a tour of the gardens and maybe he'll have a look at production. I'm excited, Gatti is the main man. I'll link their details down in the description if you're looking to climb or do tours or anything you need. They've got motorbikes. They're probably the most popular tour company in Darjeeling itself and they're a great couple. Uh, family run business. I'll put the link down there. They'll look after you. Let's go to the tea gardens Right, we've just arrived at happy tea gardens. He's gonna show me the tea gardens He actually lived just next door and grew up in these tea gardens. So he knows everything about everything here Where I was born there in Kutztat and Greenwich this is crazy. So everywhere around the world we find this cut is up, whether it's the alcohol or there's always a link back to Greenwich. I was born in Greenwich, I lived in Greenwich, even up to a few years ago I was living in Greenwich. And the Katasag is the famous boat, the clipper, that's actually still there. It's been preserved, burnt down a few times, but it's been preserved. It's bizarre. I see it everywhere I go, there's something that reminds me of home. <laughs> we are ready with the tea testing. Okay. Just to see the production side of it, it's really, really interesting. And to see how much work actually goes into making this kind of tea. Obviously, this is not the tea I'm talking about back in the Tetley tea bags, PG tips, and all the rest of it. That's just the dust that they get from this stuff. So the actual tea tea, the tea drinkers, the proper tea drinkers who <laughs> slurp it, that, these machines, they use to separate the quality. The larger, the more flavor is basically how it, how it boils down. And as they grate it through the system, all the crap goes to the bottom and the top stuff gets shipped off. 95% of it gets shipped out to Europe actually from here. 5% um, remain here and are sold in the shops locally, but it's interesting. I'm not a tea drinker. I did get involved, but it is interesting. Like in Darjeeling, we have a four variety of tea. Mm -hmm. One is called black Let's tea. Try that one for sure. And uh, black tea is like fully fermented. So for every black tea and a white tea, we need 2.50 gram and need to brew it in a 90 to 95 degree temperature of water for five minutes. Three to five minutes is the standard time. This one is actually young leaf. Mm -hmm. So for the green tea and oolong tea, we need 4 minutes. Basically green tea needs 3 minutes, but because of the big leaves, We'll brew it for the we'll brew it for four minutes because this takes some time to open up the leaves. Maximum oxygen should come with the tea. So like stuff like this. 
You need to roll it in your palate, no? But this is more creamy, more sweet. <laughs> it has some green leaf, mm. some brown leaf. And oh, this, this one has the um, very medicinal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've never tried it on the tea in my life, so this is going to be. Don't try any of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like honey. Yeah. Okay, this is the strongest one. Wow, it's got a kick, it's got a punch to yeah, it. Yeah, it has a bite. Yeah, yeah. But not too much. Not too Still much. Still smooth. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. I think you'll like that one, Sammy. Punch it. <laughs> They're taking a the mick out of us because us in Britain, obviously, we have our tea with milk, sugar. It doesn't taste like, taste like tea anymore. And I didn't realise, but the, 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 the process of making the tea, so it's from the leaves, and then it's like almost grates, and then the bottom is the dust, and that's what gets filled in our tea bag so it's the, the least quality or the poorest quality should i say this is the best quality um i like me telly tea bags i'm not a, a, an avid tea drinker it's a great experience the flavors just don't quite sit right with me coffee it's a different story i do like a cup of coffee but i can understand why people really get involved in the tea because the intricacies I didn't realize how much work it actually takes and how much work goes into making the tea not only that but the flavors and the notes in the tea you know when you go to a fancy wine restaurant and everyone's saying oh they can taste this and taste that and taste this that's exactly what it's like you've got so many different notes in each sip it's very very impressive how they make it and obviously they don't make an abundance of uh, the, the tea leaves because it's a very delicate process but I do appreciate the work the labor that goes into it and I appreciate the experience as well so thank you Matthew <laughs>
go. This place is a very local place. No tourists here. No tourists. Sure. That is delicious. It's curd. So I'm mixing the curd and like the sweet chutney. It's got a really nice kick to it. Oh, this bread. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, the bread is next level, man. Mm. My God. So tasty. Got the salad here, the onions. Got the salad, the onion. See here? Right. I'm going to be digging into that next. Right, I'm going to get stuck in. This is this is chickpea and potato. Chickpea and potato. And they don't cut the potato. They boil it and they just break it up. Happy face. But I was very hungry before. Look at these sweets as well. Got cookies. What's this one on the top left, Gatti? La Douce. Have a look at this. You get chat all over India, but obviously every region does it slightly different. This one is samosa chat, so it's got a samosa in the middle and everything else around it. So you give it a good mix. Get some samosa. Let's go. Oh my god. There is so much going on. Wow. You've got chickpeas. To pomegranate. To what tastes like coriander. And then you've got some potatoes. And then you've got like um it's almost like coleslaw, the equivalent of a coleslaw. So like, it tastes like stripped cabbage. And then you have some onion, and then you have some tomato, and then this is just a whole load of goodness. And then you've got that samosa in there that really, really gives you that bite. Oh. You have to sit there for a minute and figure out what the taste you're actually tasting is. Because they hit you at different times. Look at this. Look at the colours. Oh. Incredible. One thing to note about this dish, the chug, is the salts they use. So they use three different types. They use the white salt, and then the, the high altitude salt, the black salt, and the Himalayan salt, which is higher in sulphur. And it really gives a different feel and a different taste. What is, the, what's the black, is the black salt uh, fine or is it rocky like Himalayan? Rocky. Uh -huh. Unbelievable. It just hits all the right notes. So there are sour notes in there as well that they use mango powder. I mean, there's so much going on in this place. It's just like, it's hard to get your head around, but it just, like India, it just works. This food just keeps on coming. Gatti's stitched me right up here. This is a dessert. <laughs> oh, it's warm, yeah. I, I like it colder, but like it's still it's so warm. Nice. It's, uh, it's it's like more condensed form of like milk, you know. You keep on boiling and you make it more condensed. And like it's way, you know, like way is like put together and made into balls like that. Wow. Okay. Malai is like a cream, you know, like the cream. Uh-huh. I'm gonna get stuck in. Saffron. Uh, saffron. Saffron gives the color the yellow. Ah yes, yes. Wow. Very sweet. Delicious. It has saffron inside. Little tiny hairs of saffron. We give it the, 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 certain, the obviously the certain taste, but, but the colour as well. It's almost like a rice pudding kind of flavour back in the UK. Like it tastes like rice pudding. Really, really tasty. You, you subscribe to me. Oh, amazing! 
Yeah, yeah, I have, yes. Wow, hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you for subscribing. <laughs> yeah. I used to be in the it's got little pieces of cardamom pods like, in it as well. It it tastes, it's like exactly it. It's rice pudding. And I, and I can survive on because it's condensed, 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 condensed. Yeah. And then it's this got like a like, white... Uh, no, I want uh, more, yes. Oh, I guess. Oh but it's really fl light and fluffy. Fluffy. It's got a lovely texture. First time I've ever had that. We're definitely having that again. And you can't have a meal in India unless you have the chai tea. And this one is delicious. Oh yeah, 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 dude. That was so good. Oh, yeah, I had a few. God. I took him on the bed. They serve it. They serve it so hot. So I have to wait like five, ten minutes before I can actually take a sip. The roots of climbing was from Darjeeling. The summit started, the famous summit started from Darjeeling. There are so many, I mean, some of the most famous people in the area are mountaineers. So it'd be cool to check them out. I've never climbed anything, you all know that. And um, Sammy has climbed a few mountains around the world. So tomorrow is gonna be my first climb. Make sure you watch that video. So subscribe to the channel, please. Really helps us out doesn't cost you anything just give us a like and a subscribe I really appreciate it and then you'll see our journey we have been to Delhi Magalaya there are lots of videos on there from this trip and then we're also going to Varanasi after that so it's the same entrance the same ticket for the zoo and the mountaineering institution so we're gonna go and do the institution go to the museum and then we're gonna come back through to the zoo and we're gonna see some of the animals um, Gatti was involved with some of the red panda documentaries from the UK so he's going to teach us all about them, tell us all about them. Um, I'm excited. The air feels a bit thin up here now. And it gets to about 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm starting to feel it. I hope I'm shredding some LBs. So at this museum, you have the uh, Tenzin Norgay, the Sherpa who um, climbed Everest, was the first person to climb Everest with Hillary. Um, Hillary was actually a Kiwi, but obviously British claimed the climb because it was in the Commonwealth. But he was actually a Kiwi. Uh, I didn't know that. Um, but they actually uh, had his cremation up here, and this is his memorial. But obviously, he's like a god up here in, uh, in Darjeeling. This is where the, 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 the summit started, in Darjeeling. It wasn't actually in Nepal. So, um, history runs deep here. We're going to find out some more. I've never even been interested one bit in mountaineering but when I hear Gatti talking about it it's so inspiring and meeting some of the local mountaineers and also some of the sons of some of the great men that have traveled the world assisting people as Sherpas um, to, to climb some of the biggest mountains in the world it really is inspirational they're just built different so went up to the museum that's a definite even if you're not into mountaineering I couldn't film when I was in there but it just blows your mind. I've, I've now got three documentaries I need to watch on Everest and on the expeditions up there because it is just unbelievable. What they achieved back then with the equipment they had is just mind blowing. Also, you've got the adjoining zoo. Now, I don't particularly agree with zoos, don't like them. I walk, you have to walk through, so I took a few snaps, but um, yeah, I'm really split about the whole zoo situation and the because they probably they're probably captured them. They're not bred in captivity, so it's like, is it spreading awareness? Is it? I don't know what it's doing. So it's not my opinion. If if it was up to me, there wouldn't be any zoos, and it would be illegal to have zoos. However, who am I? Who am I to say? <laughs> <laughs> right mate, it's the morning of. How are you feeling? Terrified. Absolutely as, terrified. As well you should be. But we'll get through it. The knee will hold up. Yeah, feel good. Feel good. Just packing all the stuff up. Because we're going to be staying the night 
up in the mountain. 4,000 meters, and it's the first mountain I've ever climbed. And hopefully, if the air's clear up there, we should be able to see Everest. We should be able to see four or five different peaks. So that's, I'm absolutely buzzing about that. Been on Netflix, watched 14 peaks. I'm in the zone. This is gonna be unreal, this experience. But I am nervous, I am anxious. I've got a bad knee. But I do wanna climb as much as I can. I wanna get up to the summit. I just don't know if my knee's gonna hold out. We'll see, we'll see. Have a nice trek. Thank you. So we're going on the trek now. We just left the hotel, Magnolia. Really nice stay here. If you are coming here, perfect location. This is crazy. So we're actually in the cloud now. Look, have a look at this. You can't see further than probably 25, 30 feet. I don't know what, it, what it's going to be like when we um, when we get up there, or if we get up there, but it's going to be an experience and a journey, nonetheless. This is Gatan's shop here. Adventures Unlimited, India. That's the company. He's been here for his whole life, grown up here. He knows the area inside and out. If you need any help when you're in Darjeeling, make sure you contact this guy. He's looked after us for a week solid. Him and his wife, a beautiful family, with the three children. Yeah. He's the man. Do you have space? We're just gonna get our bits now. He's got coats, liners, and some, some down jackets. The largest one I have right okay. now. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Yeah. Yeah. I like him tight, so. <laughs> Normally, I've got no choice. Aji, <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> This brother here is going to be uh, saving our life today. <laughs> Have a <you> check. <laughs> Along with our good friend here, Gatti, who's been looking after us for a whole week. Yeah. We've been getting on his nerves every day. <laughs> He's been very patient with us. So this is the this is fog that's passing through. So you can still feel the sun through the fog. It's very very strong. Have a look at that. You can't see anything. So the journey begins. What's up, Mark? We've got a text for a key call for them. Chris Chenula. Chris Sola, Chris. How are you feeling, Sammy? Yeah, man, I'm buzzing. Yeah? Very excited just to get out into the wild. The Taekwondo class there in the square. So uh, this guy does it to help the underprivileged children, um, and he runs it. <laughs> he runs it by getting donations from the locals, and their kids um, compete nationally, uh, which is incredible. Um, apparently, they've got a really, really strong women's team that compete uh, internationally as well. So. I love that. That's a nice start to the morning. Put a smile on my face, that has. Please down. They will have the crane sent. What doing? Can you help us? I can tell the police if you want to. We are going down. I can inform okay. them. And what happens when tourists try to? Oh, yeah. They have no idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Oh God. Yeah, they would be down there. So, are they from another region? That's yeah, why you speak English? Right. Yeah, I can speak their language oh, also. God, it's so I'm not very fluent. 
Amar. Kutsa. Kutsa. Ja, geil, ja. We're here at the moment in Mani Biang and then we're going to be driving to Dotri where we're going to have some food, we're going to have some, uh, we're going to have some fuel and then we're going to 8k up to Tonglu. It's going to be trekking all the way to, how do you pronounce this brother? San Sandakpur. Sandakpur. Sandakpur, which is 3,636 meters. I think we're going to get a jeep up. It's all getting very close now. It's all getting very close indeed. Real people living real life in the mountains. Chale chalo. How are you feeling now, huh? Good, man. Very good. Itching to get out into the wild, man. Itching to get out there. I need some food, I know that much. Hopefully okay, it doesn't matter, I need some coffee. So Dhutri is a place where you can find a lot of medicinal plants itself. So, mm. so there, uh, after walking for five yeah, minutes... Apparently they have the best oh, beef momos, the most Hello. juicy beef momos here in Dhutri. So we're going to go and try and fill up our bellies and then get on the road. Yes. The taste of food is completely different. Wow. Yeah. Hello. Like in Kakuan, Hello. You, know, you saw the replica. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. The then that's how it dries on top. Yeah. Amazing. Very traditional. Huh? Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah. Got it. This is a wild kiwi. Look at that. Wild kiwi wine. Wow. You can smell it. Oh, 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 oh. That's Roddy Rendon. Denver. Oh, Roddy Denver. Yeah. Oi. Oi. Wow, that is, yeah. Conjure. <laughs> the, the, the smile on my face just got bigger. This is the yak, yak cheese I was talking about. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is the hardened stuff, you know. Like when, when it's first made, mm -hmm. it's soft, you know. When you hang it, you cut it in slices and you hang it here. And the heat from the oven, you know. Mix it hard. Ah. Back in the days, like you know, when there was no sweets and all, this was a delicacy. Like you break them in the small, you put it in, pop it in the mouth, mm -hmm. and it takes like two, three hours, and, and slowly releases the milky taste from the ah. cheesy taste. You know. These are all for the stock, you know. Oh, look at the size of that. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's a mock too. That that's a soup boiling with all that bone inside. You know, Perfect. It's like stock here. So from one side you put the fire, yeah. the one it's boiling and all, the yeah. other one is to keep all the things warm. So the chimney is going outside. Yeah. So every day now, she's doing the whole day work like that. It's burned or somewhere else. In the evening, it's been lay, uh, the clay has been uh, kept over there. Uh -huh. yeah. You put a new, new, you put a new, new one on it. And oh. when you come in the morning, it's... Oh, so yeah. you don't have a crack on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. first, initial, when you make, you make with the bricks itself only. Yeah. So first few days you have to put on the clay because it's a uh, thicker one. Thicker, yeah, yeah. Then you make it thinner, thinner, thinner. Then you just have to apply and a small. Insulates the whole oven also. Yeah, yeah. yeah it makes the room room warm, also warm. warm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And it always here is the cold place because we are in altitude, as same as as in Darjeeling. Mm. But uh, because of that, the windy storm is a small town. Dhotri is small town, so because of that, the food has to keep on make on uh, hot. It's uh -huh. yeah, so yeah, because that's of this, always the, on point. Always uh. on the fire. It's <laughs> Beef momos. <laughs> My new best friend. Didn't have uh, that much of red rubber, but on the forest you can see some of them. So which I'll show you. This is the wine made of rubber. So tomorrow when we're coming down on a Megma itself, I'll take you to the place where a lady makes the rubber wine itself. I'll take you to it's a small house, and not only the wine, the other rubber vodkas and other stuffs she also makes. So. Mm. 
the yes, process yes. is done through the distillation process. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll uh, tomorrow I'll show you all the process also. Amazing, thank you. This is good one. <laughs> So how they preserve the chili is putting the uh, first they keep, uh, bring the chili, they wash the chili very mm. nicely, they dry it up. They don't dry it properly. Answer. They just dry it up. They put it in the jar and they put the salt on top. Salt is already so there. Salt she doesn't said damage your stomach and all. So when you eat this chili also, it becomes very very tasty. Yeah. Good. Good. What makes it unique is the taste. You'll get a uh, mm. oriental taste. Mm -hmm. They use Szechuan pepper. Right. Thank you. It's really a, a different uh, cuisine than in other places. Yes. I haven't had much soup yet. Tighten it. Just put a little bit. At home we cook a lot with Szechuan pepper. We love it. Yeah, that's it. I don't think yeah, we have... So please we enjoy. <laughs> the cheese. You put it in after 40 minutes. You put it in your mouth, leave it in your mouth. After 40 minutes, the milk starts coming out and it starts melting. Ah, yes, my one. Sorry. Thank you. Oh, it's very hard at the moment. The meat is so fresh. So they were saying that the the animal that they slaughter is very, very lean because obviously it's just up and down the hills all day. And it tastes so good. We're gonna walk into that cloud there. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello. Also. So right now they have put the pea on between, mm -hmm. the potato on the side and potato on the between. Why they have put the bamboo sticks around is they have got many like uh, animals like cow, sheep yeah. and chicken and all. So they might not come and destroy all the things. So in order to save also and the second the pea gets supports also. To uh, I see, I see. So it's a multiple use. So for this and in the mountains here what happens is we don't have a flat land so mm. we always mix the steps to yeah. do the irrigation and all and all the manual which comes out from yeah, the yeah. animals the cows and all are all always used in the field itself it's a fertilizer. Yeah, for the amazing <laughs> We're in the alpine section of the mountain here. I'll show you up close in a minute. Absolutely stunning this place. <laughs> Primary school in the middle of the mountains, how amazing. So this section here of the mountain is where the red, where you'll find the red pandas. You won't see them, they're very, very good at hiding, but this is the bamboo they eat. How's that for timing, eh? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> oh my god. We made it to the first point, Tonglu. 
3,000 meters. So we just missed it. Look at this timing. Wow. Perfect timing. We're going to rest here, wait for this to pass, and then continue up. <sighs> My knee, but we made it through, tighten the strap. So far, so good. We're going to make it to the top. Amazing, look at that. The famous blood sausage, huh? <laughs> I will be going there. Oh, wow. This way. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? The steepest road in India. Oh my god. It's four wheel all the way up.
It's so cold up here. The roads were unbelievable. The video is not going to do it any justice. Like there's round bends and like it looked like loose rock. Insane. It's so cold. <laughs> How are you feeling, Samuel? I feel amazing, man. We're up in the mountains. Absolutely exhausted. Have a look at the room we're standing. How amazing is this? Probably so cabin. Freezing in here, so we're going to be in a sleeping bag, in a quilt, under a duvet, with a blanket, Cuddled with four up. pairs of socks, <laughs> with his finger up his bum. So, <laughs> now then. Dongba, 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 Dongba. Review, taste test. <laughs> Hard saying? to describe. <laughs> <laughs> so you finish this, you just add more hot water, oh, really? and you get the second lot and third oh, lot. You can even go up to four. What do you think? Uh, wow. It tastes like if you leave a white wine out for a week. <laughs> yeah. And then you sip it. Yeah. yeah. White wine out for a week, that's what it tastes like. Yeah. Not, that I've, not that I do that on a regular basis. <laughs> okay, the reason why I'm serving you the noodles is the, in the mountains, it's very uh, good and healthy for you. And it becomes very uh, good digestive system also. And the start makes your body warm mm -hmm. also. So it's just to relax your body. So eat the noodles, enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, yeah. bro. Thank you, brother. Some of them. Just Check it all on there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's an experience. Yeah. yeah definitely. So you're happy you're here, eh? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man, I am. Yeah. I'm used to that. Why <laughs> not? <laughs> <laughs> it's good, right? Why am I? Nay, nay, it's not a What was it called? It's just like a noodle nay, nay, dish, nay. right? It's not a. I'm it's the same here, brother. <laughs> but it's good. And it tastes good. Nay, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. No, it's the same thing. <laughs> <sighs> so that building is in Nepal. That building is in India. We're just gonna go for a walk now. It's really foggy, zero visibility, so we're not gonna see the peaks this morning, I don't think. Maybe when we're coming down towards 3,000 meters, we might have a chance, but it doesn't matter. Oh, it's the altitude or we've been looked after so many laughs wow this is an amazing experience unfortunately we didn't get to see the view that wasn't the reason why I'd done the tour on the trek just to uh, challenge myself, I'm overweight, I'm unfit and I needed something like this for as a kick up the backside to go home, get fit, get well, get healthy, bring my weight down so these treks become a little bit easier, oh, is that a little bit easier, a little less tough and I can push further. We've made great friends with Gatti and Catherine, they're amazing people. I'll put their, their information down in the description. If you are coming to Darjeeling, if you want any information at all, you gotta hit them up because uh, our experience in Darjeeling would not be anywhere near what it was if it weren't for them. So a big thank you to them. I will be coming back with Nyan at least to Darjeeling and we will be pushing on further I will weigh less and I will be more fit
what I love about India. It's a bit mad, a bit crazy. Bagal. Good morning. Today's a sad day. We're saying goodbye to Darjeeling. This place is absolutely incredible. Loved every minute of it. If you haven't seen our videos here, go back and watch them. We've been eating the local food. We've had some Nepali food. We've gone on a trek. We've seen the museums. We've learned about the history of the, of the mountaineering and where it originated from. And we've met some great people, Gatti, Catherine, the kids. It's been an amazing experience these four days that we've spent here. And it's felt like we've been here for two weeks in all fairness. But this is a special place that we'll definitely be coming back to. Thank you again to Catherine and Gatti for looking after us. You've made our stay more than, more than we could have hoped for, so thank you. Their details are down below. They, they run a tour, an adventure company. They do trekking, they've got scooties, they're going to be having homestays. Like they are the best and they'll look after you. Today, however, we're going to Varanasi. Now this is going to be a new experience in and of itself. I don't know what to expect. People have tried to try to explain the difference in energy from Varanasi to the rest of India, but I guess I've just got to go there to experience it for myself. So we're going to be getting a train 16 and a half hours from Siliguri um, to Varanasi. First off, we're going to go and have a coffee, say goodbye to our friends, and then we're going to get a, a taxi down to Siliguri, and then we'll go from there. Boys. What's your favourite thing about Darjeeling? My favourite thing is about is nature. Yeah? Nature. Yeah. yeah. What part of nature? About, about flowers. Flowers? Yes. You like the train? Yeah. What's your favourite train? The queen train. The king. queen? I mean the king. The king train? That's your favourite There's favorite only train. the king train. There's only the king train, okay. It's called the king train, is it? Yeah. And it's called Himalayan bird. This one's for you, Carl. Okay. I hope you're watching my videos. As always, pushing it to the limit. We've got three hours to get down and get on the train. The train leaves in three hours. We're still in Darjeeling. Getting a taxi isn't as straightforward as just jumping in a shared taxi especially. I'm going to give it five more minutes and I'm going to have to get a private taxi which is going to cost £25, 2,500 rupees. Hopefully we can flag down a taxi now. We've got a guy on the case for us. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We made it. Three hours. Our train is in three hours. I don't know if we're going to make this. This is not looking good. We made it. We have two minutes to spare. Let me get settled in and I'll get back to you. Absolutely exhausted. About six or seven hours in, we've got another ten to go, so hopefully I'll sleep through now till we wake up. Pick up in Baroness. <coughs> Pick up in Baroness. Oh my god, right, we've just been on this train for 17 hours. We're now at, we're just outside Varanasi. We've got about an hour, or well, 45 minute rickshaw into Varanasi, into the hostel where we'll be staying. So it feels warm, but it's not bit overbearing, but it's only 10 to seven at the minute. So we'll see how it goes. Let's find a rickshaw. I'm sure we won't be short of a rickshaw when we get out of the station. 
We're gonna have a shower, freshen up, and then we're gonna head to Asigat, see if we can get some food. First impressions, as soon as I come out of the station, back to India chaos, how I know it, beautiful chaos. For some reason, I just feel comfortable in that chaos. Sam, this is his first time in India. He was like, what is going on? There's bibs, bibs, bibs. Everyone honking, everyone shouting, but for whatever reason, I just feel comfortable in that. When we first come over the bridge, for some reason, I expected the Ganges to be a lot more narrow here. It's a big river, it's a wide river even here. I know it gets narrow at the top and bottom, but it's wide, wider than I expected. Here in Varanasi, please let me know what I should do in the comment section. I've got plenty on the list, but obviously, I wanna do as much as I can while I'm here. I'm here for four days, so we're here for quite a while. So I should be able to tick off quite a few boxes. Let's go down to the gap. That's what I love about India. It's a bit mad, a bit crazy. Bargal. Right, let's get down to our Sigat, get some food because we haven't eaten properly for hours. Bright blue skies. <sighs> Varanasi, I'm excited to be here. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting the Ganges to be this wide here and the Gat to be this layout. I purposely didn't watch too much uh, on YouTube before I came, just so I could actually get a, uh, like an authentic, just so I could get like a real nice, authentic first impression. I don't really know what to make of it. From how people were talking about it, it would be thick with dust and dirt and raw, and I'm sure there are parts of Varanasi like that. But this part right here, I think it's like the cleanest square <laughs> I've been on in India. Not a piece of rubbish in sight, not, not a bit of mud in sight. Everything's clean, look, you can see behind me. So from here, you can get the boats. Along the gap is obviously where oh, they would do the cremations. We'll get into that in the next video. But look at this view. It's beautiful view. How beautiful is that? India does it again. Every single time, India just over delivers. And every time, every new place I go, I fall in love with India more and more and more. And this is going to be no different today. Absolutely stunning. And I think we're at the right, the right time as well. We were here at about it's 20, 20 past eight. So there's not too many people here. It's not too hot. Wow, I think this is the perfect time for your first impression of Varanasi. I don't think it could have got, be got better. There's going to be so much to see here, so much to learn, so much to understand. I'm very, very excited about my stay here. Okay, let's get into it. The temperature change from here and Darjeeling is a different level. Darjeeling, it was about 14, 15 degrees. Here, we're so lucky, these next few days, are actually going to be about 31, 32 degrees, but they were actually 45 degrees a few days ago. So we've got a bit of a lull and then it's going to get hot again. So we've timed it to perfection. But it is so 
hot. It's unbelievable. So the two girls on the uh, on the uh, the Assi Gap were art students, and they were drawing people, and they asked if they could draw me. So I sat there, and they done the little drawings. I'll put them up here so you can see what they look like. Absolutely incredible. I love that. That was as soon as we got into Varanasi. That was our first experience, sitting down, getting our drawing done. Went for a massage. This is exactly what I wanted from Varanasi. And this is just the beginning. We've been here for, two, literally, we've been walking around for two hours. We've got so much to see and do. Please let us know in the comments section if there is anything that you'd like us to do or that we can't miss. <sighs> Not a good morning. Sam has lost his passport. And the problem is, when we checked into this hostel, the guy scanned my passport twice and didn't scan Sam's. So they don't even know that he's got a passport. <sighs> this is a bad situation. They're saying that he may have to stay in India for three more weeks while the application goes through for the emergency passport. <sighs> no good. If you know the process to get an emergency passport, drop a comment for us. So. Uh, it may be a quicker way. If you know a quicker way, please let us know in the comments. It looks like Sam's gonna be here for another three weeks. <laughs> uh, How you feeling, sir? Yeah, not sure. It'll all work out in the end. It always does. Well, I was just looking at the emergency document and everything you need up top. They're actually saying that if he doesn't have the passport he's gonna to have to check out as well so I don't, I, I don't understand why we've given him a soft copy so good luckily he had a copy of his passport so we're gonna to have to see if they'll let him stay one more night while we retrace his steps but this is not looking good so what we'll do we'll go back to where we were yesterday go and get the same rickshaw driver to replay the steps and then fingers crossed it turns up somewhere so I'm gonna go and Back down to Asi Gap, retrace some of our steps. Hopefully, one of the rickshaw drivers down there is waving it like that when we get down there. Fingers crossed. Sam's now in the process of doing the emergency uh, emergency document, applying for that, which is 10,000 rupees. <sighs> the joys of traveling, huh? Let's go and find this passport. It would make my whole trip if I managed to find it and we can bring it back to Sam. A smile on his face. So let's go and try our best to get this damn passport back. We'll come down and spoke to the rickshaw drivers here, let them know that Sam's passport's missing. Maybe it'll turn up, maybe someone hand it in. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Come back to the restaurant. No luck. I don't understand why. It's really confusing. I don't know where he could have dropped it. But the problem is, if we can find where he dropped it, no one will take it. But we just can't find where we dropped it. We've been to four, five or six places now. No luck. I'm meeting him here in a minute. And then we're going to sort out our plan. We'll go up to the burning gats in a minute as well, so we'll show you that. Right, okay. Last ditch is the police station. We're gonna go and see if we can get, uh, if, if it's been lost, picked up, if it's fallen out of a rickshaw or whatever, at least um, it might have been handed in at the police station. That's the last place we're gonna look, and then we're gonna go to the uh, down to the burning gats. And, uh, fascinated by the whole tradition and the uh, Agori people. I'm going to get deep into it, see if we can speak to as many people as possible. Um, so that'll probably be the next video. 
Um, we should slap. Last place. Okay, thank you, brother. Right. Sam, what have you got to say for yourself? Who loses their passport? This, this one. Travel far and wide and never lost an important document and been here for a couple of weeks. The madness has taken me. The chaos, the Indian chaos the has chaos got to him. He's lost his mind. But we found the, we found the tuk tuk driver that we were hanging out with last night and he's with us now, taking us to re retrace our steps. So hopefully it can be resolved. But and then the last place we'll look is the police station and then. And then I have to build myself a raft and be rowing on. So we're just outside the police station now. No one's handed it in. So I think that's it. We're gonna to have to apply for an emergency passport and go to Delhi to pick it up from Delhi. Um, these things happen when you travel. So lesson learned. Um, I'm sure he won't lose the passport again. So in the next video, you'll see us at the burning gaps. We're gonna go and try and learn as much about the tradition, about the history, about the Aghori people. There's so much to uncover around the, the, the burning ceremony here in uh, Varanasi. So if you can subscribe to our channel, come along for the journey. It's been a bit crazy. We've been to Magalaya, we've been to Darjeeling, we've been to Delhi, we're in Varanasi. We're heading back to Delhi after this to go to the embassy. Subscribe, follow along. Onward. I guess, what is your favorite thing about Varanasi? In the name of Banaras, what is your favorite thing? What is your favorite thing? In Banaras, I have a lot of things. In Banaras, I have a lot of things. 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 मैन जूने खड़ा है मैन काशी विश्वनाथ सन्यासी गुरु है विश्व का गुरु है ही से द लॉर्ड शिवा काशी विश्वनाथ ही इज वर्ल्ड ऑनर लॉर्ड शिवा विश्वनाथ मीन्स वर्ल्ड ऑनर हिज नेम मीन्स वर्ल्ड ऑनर लॉर्ड शिवा विश्वनाथ सो ही इज priest of that mm. god and here is the vishnu mm -hmm. Man who, who gives the life mm. shiva he destroy the life chalne maharaj ji hari om take the rudra to give you something yes. that you can wear it is a good luck he said bend this is dhaga hai na 
इस तरीके से अरे गले में पहन लेगा गले में मेनी मेनी रिचेस्ट पीपुल वेरी रिच मनी इज नाथिंग फॉर दैम बट दे गो एवरी मॉर्निंग अर्ली बाथ इन द रिवर मदर गंगा एंड प्रेंग सूर्य नमस्कार प्रणाम दे डूइंग एंड दे आर फिट दे आर एटी ईयर Seventy year, ninety okay. year old. You have to believe. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe, you don't find anything. First, you have to believe inside. Mm -hmm. Any God is not necessary. That my God, your God, my culture, your culture is not like that. Mm -hmm. You have to find out where you are believe. And trust is the biggest thing in life. Trust makes you stronger. I can understand why people say that Varanasi is the uh, the holiest place on the planet, and you can just feel it in the air. As soon as you walk down to the ghats, you can feel it. Everywhere in India, everybody thinks I want to die in Varanasi. For die, mm -hmm. they come to get a moksha here. Because if you not die here, you come with your ash and put in Ganga here. Mm -hmm. The very peaceful worshiping and praying here, you will go directly to. Nirvana to heaven. Yeah. So even all Hindu people, once in his life, they come to worshiping Golden Temple, Lord Vishwana Temple, Varanasi, five thousand years old. And once in his life, he want to take a bath in Ganga. And once he thinks in dream, I want to die here. Last moment in India, any any medical or any kind of issue, health problem, people come Varanasi. They come for two reasons. They want to be healthy, and if they die, they are also healthy. <laughs> they are happy anyway. People can be sadhu in any age. It's not necessary you are in forty, in thirty, in ten, or in seventy. Mm -hmm. That insight is come immediately. That oh no, I don't interest in my family. I don't want money. I don't want food nice. I don't want nice clothes. I want only God. so that day you are change yourself you move your family you don't want to fight your family you said that i don't want to taking care of you please do not take care of me now i am depend on god and god depend on me so that day you go you come to guru you meet the monk you tell that i want to do seva i want to do ritual i want to be praying in my whole life so they are become sadhu and if you want to see the god you have to see first yourself then you find the god look at these people they are very rich they have no problem they don't need 5g 4g 1g iphone they don't want any phone they don't want any laptop look at this guy how how much uh, energy he have inside very calm very peaceful sleep Yeah. that you cannot find in your hotel when you sleep <laughs> yeah. you feel something yeah. that not comfortable <laughs> here is two burning god one by electric and second by wood many brahmins people living oh, in this okay. area yeah, yeah, the yeah. brahman is the very highest caste uh, living in hindu religion uh -huh. they are uh, top and they are uh, why very famous why they are very nice because the we are learning by them uh -huh. you know uh -huh. the all hindu religion uh -huh. they are like a guru uh -huh. you know? so look at here this is the reality of life that in our hindu religion we brings our body to make the cremation by wood and uh, in your family who gives to you fire of the body he must be your brother father uncle son not lady only boys or mans can give the fire and female cannot come here even female body but female not allowed to come here one body takes 3 hour to make a fire mm -hmm. after burning people take bathing next ghat 
and take the ashes they put in the river in the Ganga. So our body is connected with five element. So before the burning five people they make a round five times and give the fire and after the burning they have to break the skull finish your connection go directly to nirvana connect with lord shiva i actually can't put into words the experience down here it's uh raw the energy here is uh something i've never experienced obviously they're cremating the bodies but the way they do it the tradition the rituals the mantras it's just a powerful energy really powerful energy it's very slow you can see there's a lot of it's obviously life and death here they're celebrating the life of the past person and you can really feel the love it's a beautiful thing Everyone in his life loves someone. Can be you love me or I love you. <laughs> Can be anyone. But you can't control your mind when you lost them. You break like a glass, never join. So we are here at the burning guard. But if you are broken, you have connection with Shiva. No problem. You speak Telugu. Telugu. Yeah. You can understand South, South Indian, South, South Indian. Indian. Yeah, I'm from Andhra Pradesh, Pridigura Allah, Gunduru Jishi. What do you love about Varanasi? What's your favorite thing in Varanasi? Yeah, I love Lord Shiva. And sort of, no speed, no words, telling us Lord Shiva. Yeah, therefore, Dvadis Linga Ek Linga. Dvadis Linga Lu Vaka Lingam, Varanasi. Then, 15, Vadihen Adukula Lothulu, Vaka Bavi. Then, Pandendu Adukula Lothulu, Vaka Shiva Linga Mundi. Then you want a reason to get these are very gay. Your PM Modi is such a hardly showing a life. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay. All right. 82 guts all the way along. Mind blowing. It really is. And you can't describe it, you have to come and experience it. So we've had to park about half a kilometre away from uh, the Gat because it's election day. It's a bit crazy today. Everything's shut. As you can see here, all the shops are shut. However, we're going to make it to the ceremony. Really looking forward to it. We've got to go to the main Gat. Apparently there's a really nice restaurant there. We'll have some food, go down, watch the ceremony. Happy days. I have no idea what to expect here, but there is tens of thousands of people on this gap. They're all on the boats as well, so you can see it from the boat, which is another option. I might do that tomorrow morning. I'm gonna wake up for the 5 a.m. ceremony tomorrow morning, so make sure you subscribe and come and watch that video. He's going home. <laughs> <laughs> you might never see me again. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> A seven member is five member. Seven member five yeah, five member. member. Wow. Yes. And further down there? Yeah, they, they are not ceremony. No ceremony. One ceremony in Asighat. Second. Uh -huh. Second ceremony. Uh -huh. Yes, five or seven. Opposite. Uh -huh. Yes, and, not and, opposite. In separate. And Asighat, how many how many they have? Uh, morning time. Morning, morning time, time uh, five thirty. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> this is mental. <laughs> 
every day. This is like this. Every evening at 6.45. Absolutely incredible. It's an explanation about the Ganga Arati. It's a Ganga ceremony. This happens since many of many years, like thousands of the years. It's the devotion of the Ganga, Ma Ganga. And it's the city of uh, the Moksha, the Shiva city. As the, uh, as the people know, the Ganga comes from his pony, his hair. So Shiva and the Ganga is the one place. This is the uh, importance of the Varanasi. It's called Nirvana city also. And it's also called the festival of the city. There have many of many things in Varanasi. That's we call we do the ceremony to the Ganga, mm. to pray to the Ganga to come to the us and give uh, blessing to us because it's the purity of the Ganga has like to uh, clean of inside of and outside of the peoples. So all of the world, like those who are uh, really related to the. Hinduism or those who have a belief of uh, uh, spirituality, they come to the Varanasi, they take, a take a dip to the Ganga and pray to the Ganga because it's the cleanness of your inner body, inner things and your karma. So that's why in uh, every evening after the sunset we do the ceremony and pray to the Ganga to come to our earth, our place and give blessing to the others. So this is the meaning of the ceremony that we do and there is also the Shiva inside of also because in the mantra we also use the Shiva uh -huh. because both have a connection the uh, Ganga, the Ganga and the Shiva uh -huh. so this is the explanation of about the ceremony <laughs>